Lamer Gamers, this is Simply Travis and Rowdy5000 for the Lamer Gamers Podcast. Recently, I've been preparing for adventure. This upcoming year, I plan to don my shiny anime armor to begin starting up a base in the middle of the frozen Colorado wasteland while exploring a mine full of monsters using my handy-dandy Monado in one hand and my Pip-Boy on the other. After I take on this swarm of cube-shaped monsters, I'll talk about my top five most anticipated games of 2020, while Rowdy5000 probably makes fun of me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just here for emotional support this episode. Pretty much. <laughs> All right, guys. Here they come, Rowdy. You ready for this? I don't know, man. Let's hit that battle music. Battle time. Man, that was a tough one. How'd you do on that? Oh, man, I just played the music. Did you find any epic loot? Uh, I found an actual epic loot. Nice. I played <laughs> all the metal music on. Oh, that's an amazing sounding loot. But <laughs> Oh, that was terrible. All right, guys. Before we get started with my Simply Travis's top five upcoming games of 2020, if you like what we're doing, share this episode on your favorite, uh, you know, podcast player with a fellow lamer and maybe you could leave a review on Podchaser or Apple Podcasts to let us know how we're doing. We're on everything except iHeartRadio. Yeah, stupid <sighs> iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio if you're listening, which you're probably not because you don't like us. <laughs> Put us on, please. All right, guys, let's get to it. Now, I'd originally planned on recording this by myself, but it has been bonkers at my house lately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my... I don't know if Rowdy's walked into the bathroom over here yet, but, I mean, the floor is literally sheetrock. Yeah, there's been a lot of construction over yeah, here. Yeah, a lot man. of construction and dogs and all sorts of crazy. Anyway, uh, so I decided to bring in Rowdy over here so he can kind of make fun of it. And, you know, I always think that the podcasts tend to do better when we're both in the same room. So Yeah, I'm just here for emotional support. This yeah, time, man. exactly. Also, uh, after this segment, because this is a two-segment show... Because uh, this is simply Travis and friends. Uh, there's going to be a Lamer Gamer community roundtable that you can listen to uh, where I brought in some people from the Lamer Gamers community that are talking about uh, what games they're looking forward to. And they have games that Rowdy and I both didn't pick. More, I guess, almost casual base games uh, and things that I think you would enjoy. So, all right, guys. So first up on my list and what I'm making Rowdy do whenever I'm putting things on my list. He's got to try to guess which game I have. Maybe you can guess, too. I think I have some ideas from your intro. Yeah, I kind of gave away a lot of it on the intro. So the first game on my list is one that I originally spent $80 for on eBay. I tried to snap this game, uh, snipe this game for months. I know it. Under 100 bucks on the Wii. Do you know what time it is, Rowdy? Xenoblade. It's rain time, Xenoblade. You are correct. Man, I bought, I bought this on Wii U. And just, I got like four hours in and realized, like, I don't have time for this right now. Yeah, I could see that. Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, the OG Xenoblade, is amazing. Um, if you take a look at, there's three main Xenoblade Chronicles games. Now, it is part of the Xeno series, the meta series, eh, if you want to be more... Based. Yeah. <laughs> They're all related somehow. Uh, they probably have a big sword and waifus. So did I think it, that's about it. Did it start on Square Enix? Or start with Square? Yes, it okay, did start well, with the Squeenix, or Square. That's why it's weird numbered. Maybe. That could be weird it. Weird named. And yeah. None of, none of them, like, technically, like, fit together, but they're part of the same universe. It's like Final Fantasy and, right. and all that. Right, and, and, you know, Chocobos. There are no Chocobos in this game, though. Don't worry about it. Uh, or are there boy bands? Now... <laughs> All right, guys, if you have never played this Majestic mag uh, Masterpiece, then here's a quick breakdown of what it actually is. It's kind of an open-world RPG. Um, you can travel wherever you want. It's really epic-looking. It's a beautiful combination of fantasy and sci-fi developed by Monolith Soft and published by Nintendo. So basically, Monolith Soft was uh, obtained by Nintendo years ago, and this is basically, I think this is their first game that they made. Side uh, note. Side note. They helped with Breath of the Wild. 
Yes. <laughs> Monolith Soft was a really good acquisition for Nintendo. Uh, the sort of epic overworld style that you see in Zelda was pretty inspired by a lot of what they do, but they knew a lot of tricks that made it to where it was easier for Nintendo to uh, hide things, I guess you would say, hide graphical uh, issues whenever you're dealing with such a large scale. Uh, so now it's part, once again, it's by uh, created by Tetsuya Takahashi. Uh, so it is part of that Xeno meta series. Um, and the story, if you don't know what the story is, and there's going to be a lot of people that don't know, because one, it was hard to get on the Wii. It was not easy. Uh, it reviewed so well, and it was at the end of the Wii's um, time frame, I guess you'd say, um, that people were really just trying to find it. And that's what happened to me, because I heard, oh, sweet, there's this cool game. I don't want to go buy a new system yet. The Wii wasn't releasing much of anything at that time, except for, like, cheapo third-party knockoffs of, you know, like 50 games in one, you know, kind of junk. So I went ahead and picked it up, um, and the story is great. It follows the journey of Shulk and his friends as they embark on a quest to get revenge against the Mechon for the assault of their home. Uh, one of the big characters is Metal Face. Uh, <laughs> love that name. Uh, the world is actually uh, not set on a spherical planet. It's more along the line. It's not a flat world. There's there's not like a flat Earth society junk going on this thing. But you are actually running up these humongous mechs. They're kind of like taking a perpetual cat nap of epic proportions. And you can, like, they literally name, like, the... Parts that you're at, like the Bionis' arm or the Mechon's, you know, uh, tramp stamp. No, belly that's button. not part of it. Yeah, belly button. <laughs> <laughs> the Mechon's tramp stamp would be hilarious, though. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, so with that in mind, yeah, the game's got these really absolutely stunning and surreal backdrops because you're on these massive things you see the other one in the background or you look up or to the side and you see like the head or the arms of it and it's moving they're standing just kind of on this flat field of water i guess you'd say or ocean i guess it, field of water is technically ocean rally. well i mean it doesn't look very deep yeah well so, compared to them true <laughs> uh but there's a lot of water around and it's it's pretty darn cool so um let's see uh, the game is uh, going to give you a weapon you find called the Monado, uh, which you see in most of the artwork of the game. So I'm not trying to spoil anything. Uh, and as you're playing, it unleashes its powers. Um, now, if you break down the three Xenoblade games that have been released since uh, Nintendo acquired them, Xenoblade 1 has the best story. There's some stuff that's going on in the story that's really cool that happens. Xenoblade Chronicles X has the best soundtrack. I, I kind of agree. It's got the most annoying um, implementation of, of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, whenever you hear the same song every time, or, oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah. 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 Uh. Now, Xenoblade, I do have to say, Xenoblade Chronicles 1 probably has the most memorable soundtrack. <clears throat> So that, that'll be interesting to hear Rowdy's take on that whenever he hears the soundtrack. Yeah. As far as exploration goes, Xenoblade Chronicles X has that one just absolutely phenomenal exploration and adventure. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is mostly really good battle system. I, I still think the OG Chronicles has the second best bat battle system. Some people disagree with me, um, but I really preferred Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And, I mean, 2 had all the waifus. Pretty much. There's only two in this in the first one. And, <laughs> you know, in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, there's at least 100. So. Waifu Pokemon Simulator? Waifu Pokemon Simulator. <laughs> all right. Uh, if you're into that thing, I guess. Um, so, on the Switch, the game's actually going to be remastered to more closely resemble... The Smash Brothers render of Shulk and just generally look amazing. The backgrounds and many of the characters appear to have been reworked. And I'm going to tell you this. If there's a special edition, 
I'm going to hit that order button so fast <laughs> that there will be like a sonic boom and there might be a shift in space-time reality. Because uh, I've gotten the special edition for X, for two. I missed one because I don't think they released one in America. No. Nah. It's my time. That, that sounds like when I was trying to order that special edition Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Pro Control. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> all right. That's my uh, my number five on the list. I, these really aren't in any order, oh, okay. to be honest. I, I I forgot to order them, but that's a good one to start with. What's, your, next, what's, what's number four? Next up. Okay, Rowdy. This next game had the most ridiculous controller on the GameCube that I still need to try to find on eBay. What do you think it is? Most ridiculous controller. The most ridiculous controller. You know I like I like controllers that are wide. What was okay, it like I'm gonna... a Fantasy Star game or Yeah, it was a Fantasy Star game. Yeah. Do they have a Fantasy Star game coming out this year? Yeah, for the Xbox One and Microsoft. Oh. Gonna be on Game Pass. Week. Week. Dude, Week. Fantasy Star Online 2. <laughs> Man. Okay, Fantasy Star Online 2. So you did get it. Fantasy Star. <laughs> okay. If you don't know, the GameCube had a Fantasy Star Online controller. That was... It was a keyboard. It was a keyboard in the center of it. It was amazing. <laughs> it was a keyboard, and it had the GameCube controllers on each, or, or the two halves of the GameCube controller on each side. So, like, you had to have, like, your arms out past your shoulders. Yeah, I need it. one of those. Bad. <laughs> All right. So, uh, it's going to be a free-to-play online action RPG in the Fantasy Star series developed by Sega. It's going to be very similar in style to the original PS1 and Fantasy Star Universe. Now, the thing about this game was, it was released almost eight years ago. It's really only been in Japan or in Asia. Um, so it's actually an old game. <clears throat> it's been locked in a dungeon somewhere in Asia and will finally escape to the U.S. for the first time exclusively to start. I think it'll be on other things later. On the Xbox One and Windows, which is really confusing. Yeah, because Xbox th isn't really big on JRPGs, man. That's normally a PlayStation thing. I really think they're positioning themselves right now to be a big RPG system. I mean, you look at Wastelanders. They bought um, ah, Paradox recently. I think they're, they're really gunning for that side of things, which is kind of crazy. They've got they'll, Final Fantasy on board. They're about to release a whole bunch of uh, They'll have more success old ones. with non-Japanese RPGs, right. non-Asian-esque RPGs, because, like, well, that's a that's a discussion for another day. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I think this is another one of those, uh, I mean, they, they're, the Trojan Horse, you know, advertising system with the Game Pass, I mean, you throw this on Game Pass and now you got all the, the weebs. <laughs> so I guess I'm considered one of them right here alright the game uh, will be focusing uh, on the organization Oracle if you play the first one and they basically travel around trying to find plan planets to colonize while fighting against the threat of the Darkers um, which you know the Darkers are basically the stereotypical aliens that want to destroy everyone in the whole universe as evil aliens tend to do uh, there are initially three planets to go to, but more have been added in expansions or episodes. I think there's like five episodes that have been added since this game came out. Uh, it's a very action-oriented gameplay if you've never played it, and you create a character based on various classes, along with some special successor classes later on. Um, the, character <laughs> the character customization <laughs> is very uh, expansive. Basically... I mean, with a game that's been around this long, they tend to make a billion faces or hairstyles or suits you can put onto them and live your life in, you know, the tech world, I guess. At least it's still being developed by Sega. That is true. Because they now, put out the first one in, like, 88 or something like that, 89. Mm-hmm. It was a long time ago. Before you kids were born. Before you were born. Now... <laughs> One thing that's cool about this, so originally you could play the game with four party members, but, 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 you can have up to 12 people in a multi-party. 12, Rowdy. That's 12. Could you just switch out like whole parties in the middle of battle or something? No, or? it's like a special mode, and okay. then you like gather a crew and do stuff, 
okay. of epic proportions, but there's 12. That's it will specific. be my goal. <laughs> we need to get 12 Lamer Gamers together online to do this. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, also, if you don't know about how the levels are kind of made, uh, there's generally going to be a task in mind for each level, and they are randomly generated each time. Not not necessarily like how the level looks, but the characters, the loadouts, where the mission ends, and stuff like that. So, they'll be a little bit different each time. And that's pretty much it for Fantasy Star Online. Uh, we'll go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, this is the first game that has been developed by Mojang in a long time. Minecraft Dungeons. Minecraft Dungeons! Yes. Easy one. Okay. It, are you excited about Minecraft Dungeons? I am, but something... I'm so excited. I recently saw something that might be a little disappointing. No, no. There's disappoint no, me. There's no classes. I did see that, and I'll be talking about that in a minute. So, too. like, I'm pretty sure, like, you can just, like, get spells and stuff like that, like you do in Minecraft. We're about to go over that. Here goes. All right. <clears throat> so this is a game that is not Minecraft. Do not go in here expecting to go into mines and craft things. So it's basically <laughs> exactly the opposite of what's on the title. There will be no crafting dungeons. There will be no making your own mines. Now, you will go into mines that are kind of dungeons. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so it is a game that's inspired by classic dungeon crawlers such as Wizardry, Diablo, and Ultima Underworld. Um, it's here is its actual advertising: <clears throat> Minecraft meets Diablo. Minecraft Dungeons in Dungeons is an upcoming action RPG set in the block worlds of Minecraft. Team up with three friends and get your dungeon crawl on. That's that's literally the advertising for it. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so. It's no longer going to be this giant cube-tastic sandbox. It's going to have a story, various quests, and actual characters that do more than, huh, 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 huh. You have to fight the illagers. Yeah, the illagers. I don't technically know what is illagers. Those are those dudes with the... They're bad villagers. They're the bad, the gray ones yeah. that I take their heads and put them on my giant Viking ship in Minecraft to tell the other ones... Don't come here. Yep. That's yeah, it. that's who it is. <laughs> All right, that's the ones that got heads on a pike. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, the story is actually going to be really light in this game. It's focusing on co-op, kind of like the um, Diablo story really is a back okay. story more yeah, so than anything. Yeah. Uh, the big bads are, like you said, the illagers, and there's an arc illager who's kidnapping innocent villagers. He's short. Yeah. We have, I mean... We have somebody on our Lamer Gamers community Minecraft place that's been capturing villagers, so I'm going to start calling him the Ark Illager. <laughs> he brought them into this citadel that he made that's massive. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, we're the bad guys. Are we the baddies? Okay. Um, no, as you're, you're just trying to move them to a better village. Exactly. They'll be happier once we've stolen them and their children <laughs> and brought them to the place where they can live in our utopian world of Minecraft. They are safer. <laughs> we'll say that. All oh, right. Man. <laughs> okay. Um, so, as you defeat the game, new difficulty tiers will unlock, giving you access to more procedurally generated dungeons with better monsters and better loot. So, that's, I mean, it's, it's Diablo. Loot is randomly generated too. And it's, I'm, I'm going to say Diablo 500 times because it's reported to play a lot like Diablo 3. Uh, in all the playthroughs that people have put on there, which makes me super excited. Uh, it can be played with four, print, four friends. I can't speak today. Uh, four friends in local <laughs> or online co-op, and it's going to have cross-play. Sort of. It's going to have cross-play with Xbox and PC, and they're considering other platforms like Switch and the PlayStation 4. This, this is a game I'm going to get on Switch. It's, you know... It's on Game Pass, though. Oh, never mind. Yeah, that, we're getting to that in a second. But it's cheap. I'm going to get it for free. All right, so <laughs> I'm going to get this for free. Um, now, it like you said earlier, it does not use a class-based structure. It's all based on the loot. It's going to oh. be based on the items you get, the enchantments you put on it, the armor and weapons you pick up. So there are 20 different types of enchants for the melee slot. slot. 20 for the range, and various artifacts that will produce special abilities, uh, such as a horn that knocks back enemies, giant purple lasers of doom, and other things. 
so it's not going to be, like you said, it, I kind of want to go in like focusing on a certain play style usually in these games. Yeah. Sounds like the game's going to make a little bit of that decision for you uh, if you get like just something drastically epic. I, I figured it was going to be something like that when they said there were no classes because yeah. of like how you do all the enchantments and stuff yourself in the game. Yeah. Or in the Minecraft, not Minecraft Dungeons because I don't know in how to play In the Dungeon. <laughs> All right. Uh, so <clears throat> the best news about it, though, this is supposedly going to follow Microsoft's philosophy on monetization. Didn't know they had a philosophy on monetization until I started reading about this game. Uh, they don't believe anymore. I'm sure they did in the past. And pay to win or loot boxes. Okay. Because you just get the loot boxes in the game if you technically think about it. True. Now, there may be, well, there are going to be DLC expansions down the line, similar to Diablo 3. It's going to release for 20 bucks for the base game. Cool. Cool. $30 special hero edition that will come with two DLCs, kind of like a limited season pass. On that game pass, too. Okay. Yeah. So, you, you don't really, if you have the game pass, you don't need to get it on the other systems. However... I know there's going to be a huge Switch following for this. Everybody and their mamas and babies' mamas are going to be playing this. I don't know, man. I, I still might get it on Switch. <laughs> yeah, for just that so cheap. I could, just so I could take it with me. Yeah. Now, at the same time... Now, ooh, you don't have a PC product, do you? I mean, I do. You're a it's Mac. just not... No, 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 I have a PC Cause, as well. Because to me, like, I, you know, I got this Surface. I can play all my Game Pass games on here. So it's almost like I'm doing it like a Switch. Now, if there is cross-play with the Switch and the PC and X-Bone versions, mm -hmm. I'm only going to have it on that because there'll be no point. Yeah. You know, if they don't have it, then I'm going to have to get it on Switch for 20 bucks because I just know too many people that I can crawl with in dungeons on there. I have a I have a PC. It's just it's a laptop, and when I game on it, I just have to plug it up to uh, an external oh, GPU. That's right. You have a toaster oven that makes your laptop play better, dude. Yeah. You see how loud it is. I bet it's like a PS3 jet engine, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> it's 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 tucked like under a desk where it has enough airflow, but mm -hmm. the sound gets <laughs> muffled. Yes. <laughs> All right, uh, next one. You ready for the next game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's read it. We're, we on. got two more games left, but I'm going to mention some honorable mentions I'm, soon. I'm, I'm three for five right now. Three, he's doing good. <laughs> the next game is basically Desert Fallout 1, but this one looks way colder. Wasteland 3. Good job, Rowdy. All right, so. <laughs> takes place in Colorado. Takes place in Colorado. Uh, Wasteland 3 is a squad-based role-playing game that uses turn-based combat. So think like XCOM, Divinity, um, almost Fire Emblem-ish in a way. Uh, you can play solo or co-op with a friend, and it's going to be made by NXile Entertainment. Now, NXile and me have been at odds <laughs> lately. <laughs> I really enjoyed uh, Torment Times, Tides of Numenera. Numenera? Numenera. Numenera. Numa, Numa. All right. Uh, <laughs> which they released in 2017, but Bard's Tale 4 was rough. Turf. Yes. <laughs> um, except it was poorly rendered and boring. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, anyway, the game's going to be set in the freezing wastelands of post-apocalyptic Colorado, and you'll take control of the last surviving member of Team November, which is a ranger squad. Uh, the gameplay will focus on story reactivity and strategic combat. So basically you're going to focus, you're going to face like moral dilemmas and had to make sacrifices. It's actually going to alter the game world. Uh, some things they've added to the game are a player vehicle. One that I'm eh, environmental dangers kind of bug me in games, like but it's walking around and then all of a sudden like oh there's a trap oh there's fire well it's oh there's a bird that drops an egg on you that's actually a grenade <laughs> I know it's RPGs but <laughs> they give me a car now now I got to worry about you know IEDs have you, know? you have you played the original Wasteland like the one that was released in like the late eighties I did not I played the the, the two Wasteland two dose yeah Wasteland two is pretty good. Wasteland 1, like, I cannot, it's hard. It's, it's hard to play, man. 
Uh, yeah, uh, it, uh, I mean, two was pretty tough. Like, yeah. I'm expecting this game to be tough. Well, I mean, like, it's it's just funny how big of a gap there was between one and two. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Wasteland 1 inspired Fallout. Right, right, absolutely. That's what I was saying. It was like a Fallout game. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. 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 Uh, anyway, so I'm always, you know, a little scared of that mechanics because... And also, they're going to be adding a ranger base I don't know to this game. So basically, you're going to set up a base, <laughs> and you're going to try to bring people in, kind of like a you know, Fallout thing, you know, like Fallout 4. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, because I just kind of want to go around and adventure. Yeah. I'm hoping I can hire a managing team and, you know, just go out and have fun, kind of like a real-world apartment manager. I mean, it might, you know... Turn to heck and then get full of bed bugs, but I don't care. I want to oh, go God. on adventures, you know. Radioactive, <laughs> radioactive bed bugs. That sounds terrifying. Uh, anyway, so the game was crowned crowdfunded on Fig, because um, that's apparently what you do with SRPGs and other PC RPGs nowadays. I think most of them are crowdfunded now. Like the Pillars games were the. Uh, Torment was Bard's Tale. I've never heard of Fig. That's why I'm Fig, make, that's why I'm making a face. Um, Fig is what's the other one? Kickstarter. Yeah, there's like Kickstarter. And Fig then... is more focused on just gaming. A lot of them go to Fig now, and I okay. think um, you get the money even if it doesn't make. I don't know how they do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> like I said, kind of ambivalent about it, but. They do say there's going to be revamp, more fluid action system. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And the uh, the preview for it has an awful cover song in it because apparently that's what you do these days. Whenever you make a trailer for anything, you just do an awful cover song. What's what's the cover song? I I know I think I've seen it's, it. I think it's "Land of Confusion" by Genesis. Oh man. Yeah. Ooh. But it's like one of these like slowed down like dark sounding ones mm -hmm. with like oh yeah, yeah orchestral yeah. drums in it then the something key that you always talk about minor minor keys, minor keys. Yeah. yeah minor keys uh so well that kind of reminds me because i just had you know picked up frost punk which we'll talk about in probably the next episode and i was showing my wife the uh trailer for it and it was like johnny cash trailer yeah yeah god's gonna cut you down which Kind of makes sense with it, but kind of doesn't. Marilyn we'll Manson just covered that song. I wouldn't be surprised, but I mean, and honestly. He didn't change anything. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> it sounds just like the Johnny Cash Well, version. I mean, you can't get, I'm sorry, but you can't get more hardcore than Johnny Cash. I mean, you can. No. <laughs> Listen, I mean, the what that version of the, um, what's that Johnny Cash song that was originally Nine Inch Nails? Hurt. Yeah. Hurt by Johnny Cash was better. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, what it is wasn't. wrong with you? No, it wasn't. You could... Um, wrong. <laughs> wrong, Rowdy. <laughs> Disagreement. All right. Next up. <laughs> well, let's go through some honorable mentions. Not going to talk a whole bunch about them, but these are games that I'm excited about. Cyberpunk 2077, which Rowdy talked about last episode. Oh, yeah. I'm super excited oh, about yeah. it. I'm super pumped about that. I'm trying to not look into it as much, so I didn't really want to do that one today, and it's already been talked about. Trials of Mana, I'm oh, excited yeah. about. It looks cool. Um, I do worry sometimes about these games that they're bringing back, these old school RPGs, because sometimes they're a little too old school for my taste, but it's still good. Uh, also, next one, there's a reason why I didn't put this on my list, because Rowdy would hate it. Uh, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire is coming out to Xbox One and PlayStation. You, you yes! can't You can't put that yes! on there. Yes, again, it's coming out. It's, it's re-released. I put be, Xenoblade on there. It's okay. I can do it. It's going to be released on Amazon Echo next, like Skyrim was. <laughs> No, dude. They it's gonna be uh it's it's Microsoft now. So you could seriously play Skyrim on Amazon Echo. I wouldn't doubt this. <laughs> they they're not releasing Dead Fire on everything. It, that game didn't do as well. <laughs> All right, and the last one is uh, Watch Dogs Old Lady Edition. Push back to twenty twenty one. Oh, snap. I was, I was going to put it on my list, and I was doing oh, my research and everything, snap. and saw that it got pushed back to twenty twenty one. I wanted to be what was her name. Helen? Helen. I think. Helen go around and smack you with her bag. Yeah, because I, I was super excited about that. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I was not excited about Watch Dogs 2, and Watch Dogs 1 was just kind of meh. Meh? But, like, 
this new one looks pretty awesome. But yeah, it got pushed back to 2021. Lame. I think they're just trying to push it back for next generation. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff coming out in 2020. I'm pretty excited about 2020. Now, here's the thing, though. In these games that I've announced, Xenoblade Chronicles, just sometime in 2020. Fantasy Star, Spring. Good. Minecraft, Spring. Wasteland 3, May 19th, Spring. <laughs> I'm going to be so busy. I'm going to play a lot of these during the summer, I bet. February to April is a ridiculous yeah. release schedule. All right. So the last one on my list, which really isn't number one, but it's here for, you know, purposes. This game has a very similar name to the last one and might be the one that I really can't stand in the end. I'm surprised I'm stumping you. I'm not stumping you, am I? I mean, is it something I had on my list? No, I don't think it was. What's another clue? I'm probably... We've dogged on this so much last year. This is an add-on. And you wanted to talk about this. Wait, you're excited? Are you talking about the Fallout 76 add-on? Yes, the Wastelanders. I'm kind of excited about it. <sighs> I'm hoping. I'm no. hoping that this is... This one is the savior. This update helps bring back Fallout 76 to its glory of its past <laughs> lives we, in Fallout 4 and 3. Oh, yes. When you started with your clues, I was like, there's no way you talking about no Fallout 76. Way. So I had to put it at the end because I'm not, this is not my most excitable game, but I'm kind of excited about it. I started looking into it. Okay. Oh, no, I'm, I'm totally going to play it. Okay. I just don't know if I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> I, I'm hoping this fixes Fallout 76, but I'm flipping skeptical, but hopeful. <laughs> this update's going to add a story. Uh, yeah, and then it's going to uh, have NPCs with dialogue trees that it says are more like Fallout 3 than Fallout 4, which basically means it's going to be like the outer worlds. Yeah. It's going to be like dead fire to where your stats can actually affect what you can say. That makes me happy. And uh, you can get campaign. You can get companions. If you don't like real people online like me. Yeah. You can also romance your companions, which I don't care about, but you know, if you like waifus, you can. Dude, you always get perks for romance in your game. I know, but to me, it's just it's like that realm of creepiness that I don't enjoy in games. That's why you romance every companion <laughs> just to get all romance perks. them all. I don't care about anybody. And Rowdy's you get a player. like post apocalyptic STDs. Good lord, you get <laughs> super gonorrhea and mutant aids. Herpesiphilades. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. Uh, Okay, I lost it there. All right, so there's also going to be new locations, more things to shoot, and generally just more stuff. Um, the story is going to involve these new NPCs, or really any NPCs, because there are no NPCs in this stupid game right now, hopping on down to Appalachia either as settlers or raiders, raiders after Scorch Beasts have been banished. Hey, Rowdy! What's up? What's a Scorch Beast? It's this big, giant, um, bat-looking thing, but, like, um... I mean, obviously, they spit fire. Okay. And uh, it, it's basically it, it's basically they took the wyverns, okay, the dragons from Skyrim, and like made it look like a post apocalyptic beast uh, monster, dragon bat. Yeah. yeah. So apparently, you can banish them. Did you know that? Banish them. Yeah, like, they say they're banished. Like use a spell. I don't know. I'm <laughs> guessing they're like gonna put like an eviction notice on their door. I don't know, man. I'm I sure that'll work, right? I didn't make it that far into Fallout 76. Uh, I, I can remember the exact moment when something happened in the game, and mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. So there's <laughs> going to be new camps, the foundations for the Settler, Crater for the Raiders, uh, along the with... Raider Crater. Raider Crater. <laughs> Come on down to the Raider Crater. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, along with a visit from the Cult of the Mothman is going to come back in this one. Oh, that actually sounds kind of cool. Yeah. Um, there's going to be more stuff, but i got to end this segment soon because there's still there's a whole other segment after this. Uh, <laughs> so expect us to talk more about the Fallout 76 Wastelanders when it comes out because we're both, we both kind of own this game. Yeah. And I paid full price for it, man. I'm I so didn't. Mad. It came back, came with the 1X. Ugh. They discounted the whole one X because it was so bad. Ugh. And I've been waiting patiently or not so patiently 
for it to get better. Um, it's going to release the first quarter of 2020. And it's we'll going to be, yeah, it's, it's going to be free if you already have mistakenly gotten a copy of Fallout 76, which is most likely sitting around collecting dust and maybe housing a family of friendly, potentially radioactive spiders. Who knows? You haven't opened that thing in over a year, probably. Yeah. Yeah. There's no there's no telling what's inside your Fallout 76 case at this point. Oh, no, I bought it digital. Be some badgers. I do everything digital. Yeah, mine was digital, too. <laughs> All right. Do you have anything you wanted to add about Fallout 76 before uh, in this segment? I mean, I'm going to play it, but I don't think I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah, I'm <sighs> I'm giving it a chance. I put it on the list to give it a chance. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely getting a chance, but is we'll, it going we'll to be see. one of our lamest games of 2020 or do you think maybe it'll be greatest? We will find out. Hopefully before spring, because everything else is going to be released in spring. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say there's a 99% chance it's going to be lamest. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm hoping it proves me wrong. <clears throat> All right, guys. Thanks for joining in on... Hey, wait, 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 real oh, quick. Oh, what, are you, what, are you, what are your thoughts on Animal Crossing this year? Oh, I'm absolutely excited for Animal Crossing. Okay. Which you're going to hear a lot more about in the next segment, <laughs> uh, because <laughs> that's why I didn't include it. Oh, oh okay. I wanted My to man. give a range of games. I'm excited about Animal Crossing, but I have not done a lot of research. I just know it's going to be good, and I know it's going to basically be played by my wife about a hundred times more. Yeah, I, I didn't look at the notes this time around because I Which had to guess. she did a lot of work. <laughs> and you will hear all sorts of things about Animal Crossing in the next segment. My, my wife just broke out her 3DS again. Oh, snap. To, She's already starting to play it? To clean up her town and everything to get, to get back into it. Oh, snap. It has begun. Oh, yeah. Ooh. All right. Thanks for joining in on Simply Travis's top five upcoming games of 2020. And make sure to stick around for the next segment where I bring in a group of lamers from the Lamer Gamers community on Facebook to talk about their most anticipated games of 2020. I originally recording it thinking that it'd be the first segment, but ended up moving things around. So if you're waiting for a third segment after I kind of talk about that in the next one, it isn't there. Instead, <laughs> <laughs> you can always listen to another episode of the Lamer Gamers podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, YouTube, www.lamergamers.com, or wherever you cast your pods. Now, let me go round up loyal historian, mom, mom, and gunslinger from the Lamer Gamers community for the Lamer Gamer Community Roundtable of Hypetastic 2020 Gaming Anticipation that you will hear right after you get an earful of transition music. <laughs> Hello, Lamer Gamers. This is Simply Travis and... Loyal Historian. Gunslinger. Mama. For the Lamer Gamers podcast, and welcome to the first episode of Lamer Gamers 2.0. As you can see, we have a couple of extra people here. Now, this is also known as Season 2 of the Lamer Gamers podcast. Our New Year's resolution is to bring you a show every single week, along with some new YouTube content and building a Lamer Gamers community uh, for y fellow Lamer Gamers to come together and hang out online. Uh, you can find that at Twitter at Lamer Gamers Cast. You can also go to Facebook and look for the Lamer Gamers community. Speaking of community, today I've gathered some fellow Lamer Gamers right after the ball just dropped. Uh, we just had uh, basically like a Civil War reenactment going on outside or something. Well, I guess a uh, revolutionary reenactment, huh? It's technically what it is, right? Huh? Civil War would work. Yeah, I guess. So, uh, the dogs, you'll probably hear barking in the background because I do have a different mic set up, so just expect them to be joining in, too, and telling us about games they're excited about. Maybe? I don't know. All right. So, we're going to go ahead and talk about the games that we are excited in kind of a small segment before I break down after the break my five most anticipated games of 2020. Now, Rowdy5000 will also have a uh, kind of singular podcast like this uh, probably next week, too. So, you can kind of expect to hear both of our sides on these things. Now, let's go around the room and do some introductions. Hey, who's the person sitting next to me? Hi. 
I'm your you? wife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Fancy seeing you here. Fancy seeing you here. So what type of gamer are you? I mean, I kind of talk about it on the podcast occasionally. Mm-hmm. So what do you play? Uh, well, I go by Loyal, loyal Historian. Okay. Uh, I am not much of a gamer. Um, mainly, it's just chill games, things that are not going to make me stressed. Except for the one you've been playing the last couple of days. <laughs> okay, unless unless it's something like Tetris or what's it called, Luminar- Luminous? Luminous, yeah, yeah. That, and you're on level 43? <sighs> Only 43. I can't get past 43. It's been driving me nuts this week. Okay. So just kind of let you know... Uh, Miss Loyal Historian, Mrs. Liz, oh, she's married to me. <laughs> Mrs. Loyal Historian, uh, she will either play games very um, non committally, that's a real word, isn't it? No, it's not. Or just completely, insanely, way too much. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I pretty can't much, keep up. I can only pretty much play when it's during some sort of break because I get way too addicted. And then I will play for 21 hours. Yeah, I have to take it away from you. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, it's in bursts. Okay, so, all right, let's go ahead and go across the table. What's your name, sir? Gunslinger. All right, Mr. Gunslinger, what type of gamer are you? Fairly casual gamer. I, 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 I you, you, this, Man, you used to play some stuff. I, I used to be into WoW, so I played too, ma- too much back in the day. Now, you say you're a casual gamer, but I have seen your setup at home. <laughs> well, just because I have it's the setup doesn't mean I'm... Freaking I amazing. Well, we may have three TVs in the, in the living room, but okay. we've got to have one for each person. <laughs> yes, exactly. Sorry, I was interrupting you. Did you have no, well, more I was about what you played? Say, I was just going to say, I... I played WoW too much, like I said back in the day, but I've kind of gone on the calmer side and I don't play very intense games like that anymore. Yeah, you're kind of my go-to person when I have questions about classic WoW or WoW. WoW! I, I purposefully did not play it because I knew bad things would happen and I need to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> working's nice. And you know, that's part of this show is too, we're all kind of trying to balance uh, life and playing video games as a hobby. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, both of y'all, and uh, we play Gears of War at your place on the massive TV screen of Doom set up. <laughs> so next to you, who are who are you, ma'am? I am my mom. My mom. So what type of gamer are you? I guess well, I am kind of like loyal historian in that I'm like a casually obsessive gamer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love that term, <laughs> casually obsessive. I will either play it a little or I make it my whole life. There is no in between. I can vouch for that. <laughs> and, and you know, I, I will <laughs> I'll vouch for that too because oh, yeah. y'all kind of got me hooked on Diablo. Yes, we did. So uh, I've played with y'all way too many hours of Diablo, but that was really fun. Diablo's the devil. <laughs> El Diablo. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and go over the games that you are looking forward to this year. What you looking forward to, Mrs. Loy Historian? Okay. And why? Uh, and why? Yeah. Okay, I, I have several. Uh, I guess my first one's going to be Animal Crossing. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is it? New Horizon? Horizons? Um... Mm-hmm. Uh, Let's see. I'm trying to think. You showed me the trailer for it when mm-hmm. when the first trailer came out, and uh, I think what I'm most excited about in the new Animal Crossing is being able to pole vault over <laughs> the, the rivers. The Olympic Games in yes. Animal Crossing. I mean, I was kind of excited anyway, but when I saw that on the trailer, I literally squealed. I do remember this. Because <laughs> it's going to save so much time from having to travel all the way down the river and then go over the bridge and go back up. It's terrible. These are things I don't think about because I just don't... I, I like Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. It's going to save so much time. Play it as much as you and then eventually run the place with an iron fist and completely collapse their economy because of how many bells you have. <laughs> so, I mean, that that is the difference. That's the only way to play that game. Well, I mean, after you've been under the, uh, uh, the thumb of Tom Nook, you do want to essentially stomp on him like it's you're okay. Stalin. You I, I overthrow him. It's all right. Yeah. These are the exact type of games that I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I I did see it uh, because I was looking at some of it. Uh, I think that you're able to play like 
I think eight people can be on your island at once. So, like, I think it's the same island. I don't think it's separate games. So gotcha. I was thinking, it's okay, I'll carry you, Travis. Like, now, you always do. <laughs> uh, when was the last time, like, that game, I don't, I basically am a... You're my sugar mama in this game. <laughs> that's really how it is. You just give me money, and I'm just like, okay. Well, that's true. I do bear it. You, you need some apples. I uh, that's true. Apples. I, I get you apples. I mail stuff to you. Yeah. And then it's like, here you go. Here's 100,000 bells. Nice. <laughs> go buy yourself some, nice. some pretty. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of other things that I'm looking forward to in, uh, in it. Uh, it auto saves. So oh. as much as Rossetti, you know, is cute and all um he's kind of a jerk and i'm gonna miss Rossetti. though well i they said something about they'll probably give him like a different job okay. in, in that universe but i like autosave okay. uh aside from that you can stack items in your inventory which is going to help so instead of just having apple 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 now you can have all four apples in one little space it's going to be great what? <laughs> <laughs> the look in your eye. <laughs> I can have these apples. Yes. <laughs> the other thing I'm looking forward to with it is uh, crafting. So this is nice because it reminds me of Stardew Valley. And so as long as you get, you know, the certain materials you need, then you're going to be able to craft furniture or tools and, and all of that. So that's going to be fun. I like the crafting element in it. Gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah, Animal Crossing is going to be well, fun. Well, you were kind of introduced into crafting, like you said, with Stardew Valley, mm-hmm. but also on an extreme level with Graveyard Keeper. <laughs> True. Y'all <Street> both. <laughs> yeah, little historian and mom mom are just... Uh, the flow chart for Graveyard Keeper is insane. I, I, I burned through that game in... Like a day. I don't and did you burn know. through the witches in the ditches? I did. Oh, yeah. Definitely the witches. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was 24 hours straight. You, well, no, I did sleep for like four of them. <laughs> yeah. I, but, but, but it was one of the, for me, it was one of those ones I made it, I was done. Like, yeah. I tried, I tried to no keep re- going. And no replayability for you. And there wasn't even like a con- Not continuing like the 12, playability. Times you played Stardew. Well, that's yeah. different. There's always something new to do in Stardew. Yeah. There's, I mean, you can always find something, even if it's just growing crops, but mm-hmm. I mean, you can only burn so many bodies before you just run out of space. I don't yeah. know if I should <laughs> say this out loud, but y'all know there's a new update to Stardew Valley. Yes. Hey, hey. Hush. It's in your notes. Oh, it's in your <laughs> Okay. I guess moving on since he already brought it up. So even though the updates were not technically in 2020, about what, two weeks ago, Stardew Valley just had another update. Ooh. And so that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to playing in 2020. However, I cannot play Stardew Valley until the summer <laughs> because I will not be able to work and I will be up for 21 hours again and Travis will take it away from me before I can play a full day. Hey, good news is we have working air conditioning this summer. That is nice. Nice. That'll be a nice change of yeah. pace. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. It's uh, they, they put all sorts of new uh, things that you can make, and I, I don't know. It's just it, it looks amazing, and I'm excited, and I'm trying to decide if I'm going to keep going on the, the, the one, the file I already have saved, or if I'm just going to restart from the beginning. Like, that's I know. Work. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, so here's... Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Y'all two make a town together, <laughs> and we reap the benefits. <laughs> well, I'm not playing that. Well, I did see. That, <laughs> I did see that on this new one, uh, you could you could set it up to something called four corners, so you can have a house in each of the corners mm-hmm. to have different people on you, your farm. You put down some duct tape and say, <laughs> I'm, "You stay on your side." It kind of looked like that because it had like some I don't know something separating. Uh, but yes, yeah, so Stardew Valley. Valley is in my future, but I cannot do that. You're gonna have like a hat build in the corner. <laughs> that would actually be kind of fun to stream. You know, just start screwing up other people's stuff. So the question mind. is, which one of us st- steals the pig to start the war? I will always steal the pig. <laughs> Well, because why not? Y'all, Same. I mean, we do have a giant German Shepherd named Pig. Yeah, that's true. So if you I want will him, steal the pig. I'd be oh. scared to be in a war with her. Yeah. That's true. She has way more military advantage than we do. Yeah, more knowledge. I'd rather be on her side. Uh, All right, you got any more for yours? I do. Sorry. <laughs> She's ready. Okay. 
So there was something that I saw called Empire of Sin. And oh, it's on yours oh, too. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so, so should we come back around to that in just a no, bit? Go ahead, go okay. Ahead. Uh, so, so chime in. Yes. So it's ca- called Empire of Sin, and I'm super excited. Mm-hmm. It's about 1920s Chicago with Al Capone, and you grow and manage your gang pirate, uh, in- gangster empire. Okay. It's like Grand Theft Auto. But turn-based strategy. Yes. Yeah, it and is. It's amazing. A, it is kind of like a real-time strategy, or not? It's not real-time strategy. It's it's turn-based combat. Yeah, I'm a little concerned that I don't know if you would really like it. Why? I've never seen you play one of these games. Now you remember Fire Emblem? But but look, your but, but Shadow Gangsters. Run. I got gotcha. you. Prohibition. Okay, so this is just going to be a way that I sneak you into this new style of game. I, I don't think it's what you're talking about. Look, so half of it is managing <laughs> and, like, having to get your guys all in a row, and you figure out, or like, you'd go and tell them to do a hit or whatever, and then, like, you have to make your own booze and stuff to sell. So so that's a Stardew Valley thing right there. You have to make it, and you decide okay, what the quality see, that you maybe want Maybe they've to. changed some things. You also decide, like, <laughs> really? It is... <laughs> I think All the things you're excited about, uh-huh. that's what I'm excited about too. But I do agree with Travis that the like the combat area may not be your. But there's no jumping, so you're all good. Oh, that was yeah. That's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all laugh. Loyal historian, but can't it's so jump. true. I don't think I've seen her jump much in real life. No, but okay. I definitely cannot in a video game, and th- it's a joke, but it's for real. <laughs> I, I will not play anything that I have to jump up and have to, like, yeah. No, it's terrible. What was, it? like I was saying the other day, the um, Mario Odyssey, I stopped whenever I had to jump up the side of this wall from, like, cliff to cliff because I kept falling, and that was it for me. Probably I was the done. the only person I know that would play five hours into a game and then be like, I quit. I <laughs> So yeah, no, that wasn't it. But I, I'm super excited about that, and hopefully, hopefully, it's not going to turn me away from it. Based That's on okay. The that what happens is I do the fighting for you. Okay. Okay. And you do all your booze management. So I manage all the people and yeah, decide who to do hits on and, and like who's getting out of line. And I will do the daily <laughs> uh, whack. Okay. Yeah. Mob boss. So I'm actually going to be the mob boss over you. Yeah, basically. Don't step out of line. A little too real. She shows no favoritism. Columbia necktie for you. Oh. Dangerous. This got dark. (laughs) Yeah, it got dark real quick. Uh, What else you got on your list? The last couple I'm just going to mention, I don't know enough about them, but I saw that Axis and Allies 1942 Online is going to be out on PC. And I know that's normally a board game, but that would be a nice... Because all the stuff's already in the program. You don't have to... Okay. So is it... I'm pretty sure I've, that's been mm-hmm. on things in the past. But this is like a more recent update. It's coming out in May. Okay. Uh, the so last, i got to put it on your laptop. Yeah. So the last three is what I'm excited to watch you play. Ah. Because I will not be able to play these. <laughs> okay. Because there's jump. Let's see yes. if I'm excited about these games. <laughs> uh, so Hollow Knight Silk Song Good. comes out in June. Good stuff. I loved the first one with the art style and, and the gameplay and all. I just would not be able to play it. Have y'all played Hollow Knight? No, I have not. Oh, it's good. Do you like 2D platformers that are hard and tough as nails? No. Castlevania I'm not, I'm not style? Platformer. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't anymore. play I mean, games. back when that was like all I, I attempt had. them and then <laughs> give up. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, the other one, other one I'm excited to watch you play is Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. Yes, you're beautiful. <laughs> is that what he no, said? No, you're breathtaking. You're breathtaking. No, you're yes. Yeah, breathtaking. Sorry. Uh, you're pretty, though. Okay. I, I'm excited right. about that because it's very dystopian. and I think Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I, oh, I'm excited about Cyberpunk. And then it didn't say exactly when it's coming out, but there's talk that Zelda Breath of the Wild number 2 will be out in 2020, but it they haven't said, but the first one was beautiful, uh, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, I'm down. And... I, I really, really like the story of this I last will, Zelda. It was my favorite story. I will take the struggle oh, and pain of making you watch me <laughs> play amazing <laughs> video games this year for 2020. I will make that 
my resolution. All right. <laughs> Good. I'm glad we have an understanding. Good. We got an understanding. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> Colombian necktie. All right. Let's go ahead and throw it over. Which one of y'all want to start first? I, oh, I, I, apparently I'm getting like Okay, I'm done. Okay. I don't care. All right. Let's hear you. Uh, I saw the new Avengers game. Ooh. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know if y'all heard about that. I, I've ta- I, we've talked a little bit about it on the podcast. Oh, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I so what are that. you excited about it for? Oh, I'm just a Marvel fan, so. Oh, okay. And and it, from what I've read, uh, it looks, sounds like it's going to be more comic story based than movie. There's going to be movie like scenes and aspects, but it's going to be more comic story based. Yeah, so it's very cinematic. I mean, it, like, yes. it's going to be like playing a movie is kind of what I've gathered from it. Yeah, that's anything. what I was, I was watching the demo walk, uh, walk through, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what it looked like. But the other thing, it might be good, it might be bad, I don't know, but the other trailer I watched was, uh, it basically looked like it was Destiny. <laughs> But with a, Destiny three with a Marvel skin, yeah, what, uh, that game was. That's what it looked like. All of the all of the gear and like that those the menus and everything mm-hmm. basically looked like it was Destiny. Oh, okay, I didn't know oh, it had a really surprised us. MMOE kind I, of flavor to it. I I don't pay oh, yeah. attention to who makes what. So it, it, I, from from the we watched the the gameplay. The, it was like the demo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. On YouTube, and it it literally is just like an MMO. They and, did say that they're gonna like load up different. Stories Stories you play through, so oh. uh, like you can play through different. I guess uh, as a, I don't know if this to be DLC or they're just going to throw them in randomly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you'll be able to reenact things from various movies, okay, uh, or different storylines. So I guess it kind of makes sense because it's like almost like a quest. Well, the fr- it starts out it, uh, they're trying to save something and, and it all goes wrong. And yeah. then it's a few years later, and they're basically that superheroes have been outlawed, and mm-hmm. they have to kind of redeem and stuff like that. That's that's the way that the trailer showed. Okay, uh, it's starting now. Gotcha. All right, you got any more on your list? Uh, the few that I saw I was excited about was Doom Eternal. It looked really, really cool. So have you played, uh, I know you have the Game Pass too. Have oh, you played yeah. the other Doom? Yes. Yeah. I like me some Doom. Yeah, I mean, it's I, fun. I, I can't play it during the school year, man, though. It's too stressful. Too man. stressful? Um, yeah. yeah it, is, it is stressful, but it was actually fun. I, I mean, I put it on the don't hurt me mode. But. I don't blame you. Those are demons, <laughs> I'm very, man. I'm bad at games because I'm. I've always been a PC gamer, and all the games are on consoles, and I'm horrible with the with the. If yeah. I had, if I had a keyboard and mouse, I'd be good. And I don't know that it, that is a good thing to look up, and that might be something I ask you about later. Is you know. A lot, there's a lot of those Bethesda games that are first person shooters. I wonder if they do work with the mouse and keyboard on the Xbox. I'm about to start finding out. I'm gonna yeah. Get it. We'll need a report. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I've got another one. All right, let's hear it. Halo Infinite look cool. Uh, are you a Halo fan? Like, I've became a Halo fan. I know it's. I've, I'm a horrible Microsoft fan because I'm not really. Uh, <laughs> I've been a Nintendo nerd all my life. I'm proud of it. <laughs> well, I actually just started playing Halo because they had the um, the Master, Master Chief, Chief collection. Yeah, it's all on Game Pass. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I downloaded that and I'm, I'm working my way through them. Okay. And it's actually a really cool storyline. I didn't mm-hmm. realize that. <laughs> I need and, to play through them. Uh, but Halo Infinite actually, the, there's not a lot of info about it, but it uses a new uh, engine. Mm-hmm. For the graphics, and uh, also the they led on that it might have some MMO aspects to it. Uh, okay, cool. More like a sandbox style and everything. And it looked really pretty. And it looked really pretty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one other one was uh, Ghost of uh, Tsushima. Okay, oh, yeah. Did y'all, I, I don't y'all know a anything? whole lot about it. I know, like, there was the Game Awards, and there was this little cute, like, lady that was, like, doing a bunch of... Oh, was that for that game? Yeah. She was, was adorable. Yeah, she was, like, a meme for a whole year. Mm-hmm. Oh. And now she's not working that. for that company anymore. Yeah. Oh. But that's all... Yeah. All I know is it's set in feudal Japan, and mm-hmm. it's the gameplay is actually based on real events that happened beginning in, like... I think it's in 1274 mm-hmm. oh, or something cool. along yeah. the lines. But it looked extremely like bloody and gory. So what type of... I, I, I know Rowdy's talked about it. I just haven't paid much attention to it. What is the gameplay looking like? 
Uh, cool. Like a, kind of like, <laughs> I mean, from, what, from what I watched, and I didn't watch very much of it, but it looked kind of like a cross between like Witcher and Red Dead Redemption style. Okay. It, it looks like it's going to be open world and dudes riding around on a horse and killing people. I don't, That's a it, perfect genre. But it's <laughs> dudes riding around on horses killing people. That's, my favorite that's genre. Witcher. That's Red Dead Redemption yep. too. That's an entire. <laughs> sh- that's Zelda. I think that was yeah, one yeah. of the uh, Full Metal games too. Yeah. I don't. Know. It was, I yeah, think we just a coined a new there. genre. Yeah, yeah. But and the and the graphics are beautiful. From what I've seen, it looked to me more like a PC game than a. It really did. Game. So, which really made me believe that it might be late 2020, and that might be something they release mm-hmm. on a new on one of the new consoles. Which yeah, I'll probably waste money on. Yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> definitely leaning to the man. I. I'm getting flack for it, but you know, I was such a big Nintendo fan all my life and I've mm-hmm. with all these Nintendo groups and like, I've been so sold on game pass because it's been like a Trojan horse into my life to get all that Microsoft goodness up in my house. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm looking at that big old rectangular monolith of a box. They call the <laughs> Xbox series X. It has the stupidest name, but I want it. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. I know you just got an Xbox one X too. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Both the guys are just kind of like looking at each other like. <sighs> hey, the, oh, no, no, no. Mine got Let the me Amby justify. <laughs> <laughs> My look is because three years ago, you couldn't have paid this guy to take an Xbox. That's he would not have. Here. He would not have allowed an Xbox in the house if I hadn't begged him to let me get one. <laughs> we get one, and then he goes and buys the Gears of War edition. <laughs> I get the hand me down, uh-huh. and now he's talking about buying the new one and giving me the hand me down of the Gears Award, which I'm fine with because I really wanted the Gears Award edition anyway. But I just don't understand why I'm the one that gets the hand me down. <laughs> just because, you know. Because I'm a horrible husband, that's why. Nah. No. It's okay. I, 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 I'm going to probably have to just give Robin the. I mean, uh, sorry, Lord of the Story and the Xbox uh, One X. But well, maybe play I'll Game buy Pass games. Well, I guess, yeah. but I'm more of a Switch just, person. Like, she I, is. You're very much a Nintendo <laughs> Switch person, which is why I'm really worried that I won't see it again <laughs> after Animal Crossing and kind of want to just buy a second one. Well, you're so far with Xbox right now, like you're not going to miss the Switch too much. Uh, it depends on what Nintendo puts out. There's not a lot that I've seen on Nintendo's plate for next year. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. Travis, I'm, I'm pretty much a, a game widow right now. <laughs> and that's because of the Xbox game pass. Okay. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. I, okay. I'll say that if, if there is, re, uh, re, uh, what's the word where they play all the old games too? Oh, retro. Where the new console will play all the old games. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the Series X is talking about them playing all the other Xbox games from the past. But where they'll fit into it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they're all on discs. I, yeah. I'm saying if, if both the Xbox and the PlayStation does that, then we'll play all the old games as mm-hmm. well. Then I'll just buy two of each and yeah. so she can have it as well because there's old <laughs> games that I'd like to play again as well. And <laughs> that if, I mean, if they smile. play all the old ones, then why not have the new one? Yeah. Just play yeah, yeah. So. All right. So, <laughs> any more on your list? No. <laughs> All right. No. Let's move on to mom, 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 mom. I want to preface this by saying I don't get excited about games very often because it is just a surefire way for me to get let down, and that's because I don't know if I can play a game yeah. mm-hmm. when I just see the trailer and stuff because I get really bad simulator sickness. So, I usually have to wait until either. Gunslinger plays a game or simply Travis plays a game and then I kind of watch. And, and, <laughs> and let I me, go, hmm. <laughs> yeah, and let's kind of just uh, let the audience know, you know, simulation or simulator sickness is something that it, it basically makes you, what, dizzy? I know well, it makes you feel like you're dying. Yeah, I've ran into it with <laughs> Gears of War 5 on my curved TV a couple times. Yeah. But if you've ever played a VR game that was just not putting out frames fast enough mm-hmm. or, you know, um, you're trying to maybe play a game on your phone that has some movement or your Switch while you're driving in a car and it just kind of messes with your head, that's simulator sickness. Uh, generally, people suggest to do more of a field of view in video games. But that's not always an option. Yeah. And you don't know until you buy the game and go into the settings. And, and want to start throwing up. Yeah. Like, I very seldom get to play any kind of first-person 
game, um, The Outer Worlds was one I was able to play. I think yeah. that's why I was so excited mm-hmm. because I was able to play through it multiple times. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of that too with that game was the color was just yes. so ridiculous, which I liked, mm-hmm. but it made it to where it was not as, I guess, immersive and 3D in certain parts. And like Gears of War, I could play if, if we were playing together, but if I was playing by myself and I had to watch the screen the entire time, mm-hmm. then I couldn't do it. So yeah. it's, it's, we co op through them all. We co op through I know that he got kind of aggravated because I was like, can we please play Gears of War? I really want to finish it. I can't do it by myself. And you still need to you come over and finish Jack, it with right? Did you in, the, the, in the fifth yeah. one? Yeah. yeah. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> All right, sorry. So anyway, that was just my little. It takes a lot to get me excited about games, so I I get more excited about watching games. But mm-hmm. I am super excited about Animal Crossing, um, for all of the things that loyal historian said. But also, I think the thing that I kind of got the most giggly girly about was that when you move into the village you start with nothing <laughs> it's not a well established already growing community it's just yeah. nothing and you get to start from scratch oh yeah and the animal cro- you're, you're just put on an island yeah they just like dump you off <clears throat> here's a shovel I did think that was cool because the animals start with nothing too yes yeah and I thought that was really awesome and the, mm. the crafting had me excited because of Stardew also and then the co-op because Empires are built. <laughs> oh, y'all can play together? Yes. Oh, we'll never see again. No. <laughs> it's okay. We'll, they can play Switches while we're playing the Xbox. You can just go move in over there and I'll come over. Yeah, there we go. Just rotate we'll for do a this while. for about yeah. a month or so. Yeah. We'll actually live together and we'll party. Yeah. Or we won't see games. them that much anyway. All right. Um, I was also excited about the Marvel Avengers because it looked so much like Destiny and. Um, Destiny was one I could play, oddly mm-hmm. enough, which I didn't think I'd be able to, but mm. I could. Uh, Empire of Sin. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Just yes. I want to operate CD businesses and be a mob boss because that's the complete opposite of what I do in my daily life. But it's exactly <laughs> what y'all do in Animal Crossing. So, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But now there's murder involved. Yeah. And moonshining. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of animals that disappear from Animal Crossing, <laughs> and I we just get a, I get a letter, but I never really dusted it for prints. That's true. Handwriting analysis to yeah. see if it's actually Apples them. Don't grow on trees. I'm starting to think here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and then I guess the other one that I was excited to personally play was Eastward, yes. which was the the. Um, Chucklefish? Chucklefish. That was involved in Stardew Valley. Um, There's not a lot of information on it yet, and all I saw was just like, oh, at some point in 2020, like probably 2025, (laughs) it's post-apocalyptic Stardew is what it looked like. Like, everything looks like Stardew Valley, but after the end of the world and nice. you're a, you play as a digger I think his name was John and you kind of like stumble across this girl named Sam and she needs a guide so you're like sure I'll guide you through all this danger and you take her through decaying cities and there are people living in RVs with porta potties and monsters and I've driven down some streets around here that look like this that. That's what I'm saying. It's like coming yeah. home. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of home. It actually kind of sounds a little bit of like after a hurricane. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. just waiting to hear some MREs are involved in this. It is Pokes But I always enjoy, I can always play, I, not always, but almost always I can play the, the that style of game yeah. without getting sick. So like Stardew Valley, I completely mm-hmm. immerse myself in it and ignore all other living creatures in my yeah. room. Mm-hmm. Children, dogs, husband, fish. <laughs> You're on your those, own. <laughs> hey, get those blinders on. Yeah. You got to get your games in. I'm very excited to hear about that one because tonight was the first time I heard about it. Yeah, I'm super stoked. But I'm also excited to watch a couple of them. Um, obviously, I'm excited to watch the Halo one. Uh, there, there was one that I know I'll never get to watch because he's not going to play it. But Zombie <laughs> Army Dead War 4. <laughs> I have no clue what that is. It is That's... set in 1946 Europe, and Ooh. there are zombies, and it's a shooter. And hmm. at, watching the trailer for it, I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. Is it a sequel? Yes. Okay, because it sounds like something you would expect to see on a mobile game. It kind of, yeah. <laughs> but, it, like, and that's kind of 
the concept, I guess, would be more of like a mobile. But it's okay. actually, from what I read, it, it's a sequel. I'd never heard of them before. But um, interesting. There's like zombies with dynamite strapped to them running at you, and you got to try to kill them before they explode you. And wow. Yeah, super fun. But I know I'm not going to be able to play it, and I don't think I can convince Gunslinger to play it. So. That's it's on Game Pass, I might, but I'd yeah. rather, rather not buy it. But, uh, <laughs> I am also excited to watch Halo. I can't play Halo, but I, I am a long-term nerd girlfriend from way back in the day and have watched many Halo game nights. I'm excited to watch. They, they have the, the Star Wars Lego. It's like nine movies in one game. Oh. All excited about because because he and the child play mm-hmm. Lego games together and I'm I kind of just watch because they're funny they're hilarious and so I'm excited to watch those and there was another one but I can't remember what it was now <laughs> alright so that's the end of your list I think so yeah <laughs> alright so uh, we're going to go ahead and end this segment thank y'all for coming in it is awesome having y'all here today uh, for thanks, for, thanks for inviting us yeah. yeah so uh, after the break I'm going to go over my top five uh, I guess upcoming games to 2020 that I am uh, stupidly excited about or you know maybe we'll be completely disappointed with and it'll be part of our lamest of the year next year <laughs> uh, so uh, hold on and we'll be right back What's up, Lamer Gamers? This is Rowdy5000, and I want to apologize real quick for how we recorded everything out of order and used a few different mic setups to try everything out. Um, uh, when Travis and myself record, we have different mic setups when we do the stuff by ourselves or when we have groups of people. Uh, it's a little different than when we just record with the two of us. Um, it got a, Our schedules got a little crazy and out of order there. And I know, like, in my top five, which was actually released first, I talked about Travis's coming out first, and then uh, in the roundtable discussion, he said that there was another segment after a break, and I guess this is that segment. And if you're confused, good, because I am too. But after this, uh, everything's going to be back in order uh, be sure to check us out. We're going to try to do, like we said, for our New Year's resolution, one podcast slash video slash whatever we can put out uh, per week, even if it is little top lists uh, like we've been doing. But be sure to uh, check us out at, lamer, at www.lamergamers.com. Uh, like also on, uh, I think it'll have links to our Twitter and all of that good stuff. It's going to have the, the podcast player in there. You can check us out on iTunes, pretty much everything except iHeartRadio. <sighs> I know we talk about that a lot, but those guys are annoying. Um, and I guess that's about it. You guys have a good one, and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.